Voy a expresar una intención. I'm not going to call her, que no la voy a llamar después del trabajo. I'm not going to call her after work. Después del trabajo. After work. Before work, after work, at work. Before work, at work, after work. I'm not going to call her. I'm not going to call her. Yo me como la H de her aquí. Digo, call her. Pero vamos. I don't recommend it. I'm not going to. Voy a decir lo que no voy a hacer. No la voy a llamar. I'm not going to call her. I'm not going to call her after work. He's not going to call her. Or he isn't going to call her after work. Y ella? She's not going to call her tampoco. Either. She's not going to call her after work. She isn't going to call her. We aren't. Nosotros no la vamos a llamar. We aren't. Aren't going to call her. Or we are not going to call her. And you? You're not going to call her. Or you aren't going to call her after work. Work. Hola y bienvenidos a la clase número 57 de nivel básico. Vamos a seguir viendo el futuro con going to, pero esta vez vamos a verlo en negativo, con la partícula not. I'm not going to call her after work. No voy a llamarla después del trabajo, ¿ok? Vamos a centrarnos en I'm not going to. I'm not going to. No voy a hacer algo. Y voy a ponerte a prueba con algunos verbos. Por ejemplo, ¿cómo se dice yo no voy a buscarlo? A ver. I'm not going to look for it. ¿Recuerda el phrasal verb to look for, buscar? Ok, otro ejemplo. Otro ejemplo. ¿Cómo se dice en inglés yo no voy a escribirlo? A ver. I'm not going to write it. I'm not going to write it. Y no voy a preguntarles a ellos. I'm not going to ask them. I'm not going to ask them. Y no voy a preguntarle a ella. I'm not going to ask her. I'm not going to ask her. Muy bien. Entonces, I'm not going to. La M es muy importante. I'm. Hello, it's Mr. Strong, y bienvenidos al gimnasio del inglés. Hoy vamos a hacer una clase totalmente nueva. Yeah, new exercises, nuevos ejercicios. Okay, so today we are not, well, I'm not going to do push-ups. I'm not going to do push-ups. Nunca decimos I'm no. No, 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 no. No decimos I'm no, sino I'm not going to do the normal exercises. No, I'm not going to do push-ups. Flexiones. No voy a hacer flexiones. I'm not going to do push-ups. I'm not going to do sit-ups. No voy a hacer abdominales. I'm not going to do any sit-ups. Yeah, and I'm not going to be soft. No, no, I'm going to be hard today. And I'm not going to do pull-ups. Dominadas. I'm not going to do pull-ups. Yeah, it's a different class today. Ok, en esta segunda parte de la clase vamos a ver la, el verbo to call y her, que es el pronombre objetivo femenino. Call her. So, I'm not going to call her es no voy a llamarla. Yeah, a ella. I'm not going to call her. Ok, vamos a ponerte a prueba con más personas gramaticales. Por ejemplo, um, ellos no van a llamarla. A ver. They're not going to call her. They're not going to call her. Y fíjate, decimos her, not her. Her, call her. They're not going to call her. Ok, no vamos a llamarla. We're not going to call her. We're not going to call her, ok. Él no va a llamarla. He's not going to call her. He's not going to call her. Y yo no voy a llamarla. I'm not going to call her. I'm not going to call her. Y, ¿qué es la palabra del día? La palabra del día es beach, que significa playa. Beach, con una I muy larga. Beach, ok. Muy, muy bien. So, beach, la palabra del día. It's technology time. 
Estoy preparando nuestro contestador automático. Our answering machine. A ver. Hello and welcome to our studio. Option one. Llama a Vanessa. Call Vanessa for questions about reception. Claro, call Vanessa. No se dice call to Vanessa, call Vanessa. Muy bien, okay. Option two, call the cleaner for questions about cleaning. Muy bien. Option three, call the DJ for questions about music. Option four, call me for questions about technology. <laughs> Muy bien. Ok, vamos a terminar la clase de hoy con las palabras after work. Ok, en la clase anterior vimos before midday antes del, del mediodía. Ahora vamos a ver after, que es después del, des, después del trabajo. After work, ¿ya? Yeah? Fíjate, no decimos after of the work, sino after work. De del, 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 del español, no decimos en inglés, ¿ya? Yeah? After work. So, vamos a ponerte a prueba. ¿Cómo se dice en inglés? Um, no vamos a llamarla después del trabajo. We're not going to call her after work. Not after of work. After work. Okay, otro. ¿Cómo se dice en inglés? Um, no van a, no van a ellos, no van a llamarla después del trabajo. They're not going to call her after work. After work. Y fíjate, no decimos work, sino work. La O suena como un E. Work. Work. Y la palabra del día es beach. Beach, que significa playa. Perfecto. I can't believe it. Hoy me tiene loca, eh, de verdad. Hello. Oh, hi. Que si voy a hacer algo después del trabajo, am I going to do anything after work? ¿Has dicho after the work? Oh, madre de Dios. After work. Es después del trabajo, no after the work. Tú sí lo sabes, ¿verdad? Dilo, after work. Very good. I'm not going anywhere with her. Um, sorry, I'm going home after work today. Yeah. Okay, bye-bye. It's Michelle. Hello. Am I going to do anything after work today? Um, yes, I'm going out to dinner after work. I'm going out with uh, Sarah. Come with us. Yeah, the restaurant is on the left side of the street. Uh-huh. Come with us. Okay, bye. The girls are going out after work. Don't worry, I won't forget. I won't forget. I won't forget to call Pablo, eh? I won't, don't worry, I won't. I promise, honest, I give you my word. I won't forget, I promise. I promise I won't forget to call Pablo. Of course, I'll call Pablo. Don't worry, don't worry. I won't forget. I won't forget to call, I won't. Fijaos en pronunciación de la contracción de will not. Won't. Os cuesta, ya lo sé, pero son, es como O, oh, la O oh gallega, O oh, urense, O, oh, won't, won't. Y cuando prometes algo, solemos usar en inglés el presente simple, will not, o will. I'll do it, lo haré, lo prometo. I'll do it. No solemos usar going to, sino will o won't. I won't forget to call Pablo, I promise. I won't forget, I won't. Hello again and welcome to a new class and a new day. Okay, let's begin our class. I won't forget to call Stacy. I promise. 
No olvidaré llamar a Stacy. Te lo prometo. Ok, la primera parte es I won't forget. Ok, I won't forget. ¿Qué significa won't? Es la contracción de will not. Ok, ya vimos el will, que es una forma de expresar el futuro, ¿verdad? So, will not es el negativo, pero contraído decimos won't. Won't. Y ojo aquí con la pronunciación. Won't. Es, esa O es como si fuera o -u. Won't. Rima con don't. ¿Ok? Ojo. Cuidado de no decir want. ¿Ok? Want porque eso es querer. ¿Ok? So, I won't do it. No lo haré. I won't leave. No me iré. I won't call him. No le llamaré. Más ejemplos. It won't happen. No Pasará. They won't help us. No nos ayudarán. ¿Ok? Again, won't. Es la contracción de will not. ¿Ok? Sujeto más won't más verbo simple. Won't. Hello, how can I help you? Ah, oh, Mr. Pilgrim. What a nice surprise. Will I work on Sunday? No, I won't. No. No, I won't work on Sunday. <sighs> won't is will not. Will not. Won't. He wants me to work on Sunday. I won't. Um, because, because I go to church. Yeah, I do. I go to church. No, I won't change my Sunday plans, Mr. Pilgrim. I'm sorry, I won't. What? Double pay? And there won't be any bosses? Oh, okay, I'll do it. Oh, church, they won't miss me. Bueno, ya seguimos con la segunda parte. La frase era, I won't forget to call Stacy. I promise. No olvidaré llamar a Stacy. Te lo prometo. Aquí la segunda parte es, forget. To call Stacy. I won't forget to call Stacy. ¿Qué significa el verbo to forget? Es olvidar. ¿Ok? Empezamos con ejemplos simples. Por ejemplo, I won't forget you. No te olvidaré. I won't forget the keys. No olvidaré las llaves. Ahora, si metemos un verbo después, hay que poner el infinitivo con to. Por ejemplo, I won't forget to call Stacy. Okay, I won't forget to lock the door. ¿Qué significa el verbo to lock? ¿Lo sabes? Ok, muy bien. Significa cerrar con llave. Ok, la palabra del día es to lock. Ok, I won't forget to lock the door. Más ejemplos. He always forgets to lock the door. Don't forget la tercera persona singular con presente simple. He always forgets. Esa S, muy importante. He always forgets to lock the door. I won't forget to do it. No olvidaré hacerlo. So repeat. To forget, to, más verbo básico. Oh, man. Esto es basura. This is garbage. People forget to throw away their garbage. Yes, yeah, se les olvida tirar la basura. We don't say throw, we say throw away or throw out. Throw is lanzar. So people forget to throw away their garbage. Look, they forget to throw away their food, their wrappers. Oh, oh, oh man. People forget to throw things away. Forget to. Mira la pronunciación, no es Forget. No, no, la R no lo, no lo usamos. De hecho, no podemos hacer eso. La mayoría de los guiris no nos sale el R. So we forget. Mucho más suave. We forget to. I forgot to do something. Well, they forgot to throw out their garbage. It's disgusting. Esto es asqueros. Oh, oh no. Oh, we have a situation. We have a code red here. What is this? Oh. Ugh. Oh, come on. Oh, oh, man. We gotta get somebody in here. Don't forget to call for backup. Oh. <coughs> ok, 
Okay, great. Now, la última parte, the last part. I won't forget to call Stacy. I promise. No olvidaré llamar a Stacy. Te lo prometo. Okay, the last part is el verbo to promise. Es prometer. I promise. Te lo prometo. And ojo, ojo con la pronunciación. Decimos promise, no promise. Okay, resiste la tentación. Sé que quieres decirlo así, pero no lo es. Repeat, promise. Promise, no promise. So, examples. I'll do it. I promise. Lo haré, te lo prometo. I won't forget to buy it. I promise. No olvidaré comprarlo. Te lo prometo. If you keep watching our classes, your English will improve. I promise. Right? Si sigues viendo las clases, nuestras clases, tu inglés va a mejorar. Or mejorará. Te lo prometo. So, ¿qué me vas a decir? Hannah, I'll study. I promise. ¿Sí? Ok, muy bien. So, repeat. I promise. Te lo prometo. El verbo prometer. And nunca decimos promais. Remember, nunca, nunca, nunca. Promais. Siempre promise. Ok? So, I'll see you in the next part. I promise. Hello once again, my friends. Do you know what this is? Pues esta es mi poción más reciente. Youth by Destiny. Una gota te cambiará la vida. I promise. Only $9.99. And I promise it will change your life. What did you say at home? I promise? No. Es I promise. I promise. In fact, I promise one drop of my potion will fix your pronunciation forever. That's right. Only $9.99. One drop will make you beautiful and young again. I promise. One drop will tell you everything you need to know about life. I promise. Oh, thank God. I was so fed up of that. What? It's just orange juice. <sighs> to get into. To get into is entrar in, haciendo una especie de contorsión corporal. To get into is meterse in. To get into the car, to get into a box. To get into a house, pues no lo decimos excepto si. Es, no hay entrada. If, if the house is locked, my house, for example, I don't have the key. It's locked. My God, I need to get into my house. I need to break a window, for example. I need to break into my house. I need to get into my house by breaking a window. Yeah, because I locked myself out. Have you ever locked yourself out of your car? Have you ever locked yourself out of your house? Yes. If you lock yourself out of your house, you have to get into the house through the window or somehow. You need to break a window, maybe, to get into the house if you lock yourself out. Have you ever locked yourself out of a car? If you lock yourself out of your car, you have to get into the car some way, probably by breaking a window. Who knows? Don't lock yourself out of your house and don't lock yourself out of your car. <laughs> Bienvenidos a los 80 segundos más intensos de vuestras vidas, en los cuales vamos a ver eh, la siguiente frase. I had to get into the house by breaking a window because I'd locked myself out. Esta frase significa tuve que entrar en casa rompiendo la ventana porque había cerrado con llave y dejado la llave Dentro. Me había dejado las llaves en casa. Bien, empezamos con la primera parte. I had to get into the house. To get into a house implica, al usar el verbo to get, mmm, la necesidad de usar fuerza. Okay? If, you, if you shut yourself out, if you lock yourself out of the house, you have to get in somehow, de alguna manera u otra. So you can get in by opening the window, you can get in by forcing the door or shoulder barging the door or barging the door down, or you can get in by calling out a locksmith. A locksmith sería un cerrajero, okay? So there are many ways of getting into a house. Normally, when you open that, the door with a key, you go in. But when you get into a house, it implies that you've had to use force, okay? 
Good. Ah, I'm officially surrounded by idiots. Somebody took my office key and they locked the door. So how did I get into the office? Well, oh, I had to get in through the window. And I hope nobody saw me getting in through the window and thought someone was getting into the hotel and called the police. Ah, Harriet, get a grip and find out whose fault it is. Well, I know whose fault it is. George, how am I? You wanna know how I'm doing? Well, as you can imagine, I couldn't get into my office today. Yeah, so how did I get in? Well, I had to get in through the window. First, I had to climb a wall, but the window was closed and I fell into a bush. So how did I get in? Well, I climbed the wall and I broke the window to get in. But a wasp got in with me. Yes, as you can imagine. It's fine, just get in here now and bring the key. Get in here now. Ahora vamos a ver cómo en inglés empleamos la preposición by para indicar cómo hacemos algo, de qué, en qué modo hacemos algo. Um, y cuando le sigue un verbo, hemos de emplear o expresar ese verbo en el gerundio, es decir, acabado en ing. Um, I had to get into the house. Pues, ¿cómo, ¿cómo entré a la fuerza o por la fuerza en la casa? Pues, by breaking a window, rompiendo una ventana. And how did I break the window? ¿Cómo rompí la ventana? By throwing, I broke the window, by throwing a stone through it. Okay, or by throwing a rock through it. That's how I broke the window, by doing something, okay? By throwing a window, by, by smashing it with a stick, for example, or a metal bar. Bien. We've seen the verb to get into a house, que implica pues, entrar por la fuerza, pues también tenemos otro verbo sinónimo, que es to break in. Y la gente que suele break into houses, ok, o entrar por la fuerza, son nuestra palabra del día, que son burglars. Burglars son eh, ladrones especializados en robar en casas, ¿vale? Muy bien. Hey, how's it going? You see what I did to my arm? I had to get in my own house by breaking a window. Yeah, by breaking a window. So, how did I get into my house? By breaking a window. SOS. What happened was, I left my keys in my friend Rachel's house and she went to work. I tried to get in by opening the door gently. Didn't work, obviously. Then, I tried to get in the window by opening it like this didn't work. In the end, I had to open it by breaking it. <sighs> I couldn't ask the neighbor because she's still angry at me that I turned her down. So I had to get in my house by breaking the window. I used my muscles like this. <laughs> Ow! Oof. I think by explaining it, I made it worse. verbos que significan entrar por la fuerza, en la fuerza, perdón, en una casa, por ejemplo, que son to get into a house o to break into a house. Y ahora vamos a ver otro verbo nuevo que realmente no tiene equivalente exacto en español y es to lock, ¿ok? To lock significa cerrar pero con llave. Siempre implica el uso de una llave, ¿vale? To lock a door. Have you locked the door? ¿Has cerrado con llave? Bien, have you locked the door? Pero ahora vamos a verlo en, dentro de un contexto reflexivo. When you leave your keys inside and the door shuts and locks, then you lock yourself out. Oh no, I've locked myself out. Me he quedado pues, fuera sí, con la llave dentro, ¿ok? Se dice muchísimo cuando eso, eso ocurre. I've locked myself out. I've locked myself out again. ¿Ok? El verbo, por supuesto, es regular, to lock, pero se pronuncia locked y no locked, ¿ok? El ed al final se pronuncia como si fuera, como si fuese una t fuerte, lock, ¿ok? I've locked myself out. See you soon for some more exciting English. ¡Qué día! ¡What a day! 
I'm so stressed. Estoy estresado. Why? Well, because tuvimos un simulacro de incendios. En inglés se dice a fire drill. Y tengo la costumbre. I always, always, always lock myself out. Yeah, I forget the keys, I leave them inside, and I lock myself out. And it happens every time. Yeah, every time there's a fire drill. Nunca voy a aprender. I'm never going to learn. Acordaros, to lock yourself out. Eso es que has dejado las llaves en tu casa. You locked yourself out. Nunca decimos lock out yourself. Decimos to lock yourself out. Y otra forma de decirlo es you locked your keys in. So you locked your keys in your car, you locked your keys in your home, and therefore, por eso, you've locked yourself out. So wait a second. Wait, where is everybody? Where's Harriet? She probably locked herself out too. And Felicity, she locked herself out too. I, I guess she did.